Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Dan. Well, last week we promised you that we would take you through the process that we're using to build our dream bathroom. We also said that we'd be back with, to you once we had a blank canvas. Well, if you look at me, it doesn't get more blank than that, right? Yeah. We, we just finished priming. Yeah. Uh, to get to this stage, it would have taken us about a week and a half because we have installed two layers of gypsum. Yeah, one gray board and then uh, one green board on top of that uh, green board being the for the uh, water areas like bathrooms and laundries and stuff like that. Yeah, but actually, do you know what, Dan? Let's just go inside and show the guys what the blank canvas looks like. It's better. We are now in the bathroom. We have a blank canvas. That's good. Uh, so what you see behind us is the wall that have been primed and gypped up. And then the first task that we're going to be tackling is leveling the area where the shower tray will go and installing the drain as well, right? Yeah. As we move along, we will tell you a bit more about the product that we're using. But just as a point of reference, you should know that maybe 90% of the product that we are using in the bathroom, in the shower area, you can find them in Europe at Leeward Merlin. Yeah. So, bathroom week, let's do it. <laughs> first things first, uh, there's a few things that you should know about this area here, right? Mm -hmm. If you are from Australia, or if like us, you're a massive fan of a show called The Block, The Block Australia, um, you're probably wondering what kind of waterproofing we've used here. Now, we have actually looked for the Australian waterproofing that we see on the block. So we're talking about the red paint that you apply that kind of turns purple, mm. or maybe it's the opposite anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And in Portugal, it's not available actually. What we have found, however, is a membrane. And because of the availability in different countries and the standards and the, the building code yeah. is so different from one country to another, we kind of left the waterproofing part out of the video. We don't want to encourage uh, wrongdoing or whatever you feel comfortable doing. This is what we feel comfortable doing and we're very comfortable that it's going to stay dry behind the tiles. Well, then do you want to get installing? Let's get installing. Let's get installing. So right now what you're doing, you're just creating the lip, the profile. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't really have to be super perfect as long as it sits still and while we glue it. So we have a good contact surface. When we put the, the glue on. You have it back in the end if you spend the extra time to make sure it sits. It sits flush and still when you pour in the, the self leveling. Because if this is a bit crooked and sticks up like that, it's gonna be a problem when you start the shower tray. The, the shower drain we bought that came with the product didn't uh, accommodate for two shower heads. Yeah. It has a bit smaller exit uh, hole for, for the water to expel. So we opted it to go with a straight drain, hopefully having more flow. Plus that our showers are uh, water saving, so it's using 50% less water, which make it 100% one shower, we think. So it should be fine, I hope.
this. Yeah. And I, and I also think that just putting a bit of tape there and folding it over create a better seal with the floor. So we know where, how much we poured and not have a... Oh, the camera doesn't pick that up so well, but you guys get the idea. It's just yeah. two little Just so we know where we stand. So while the self-leveling is on, it's hard to say if you pour one millimeter, two millimeters, or three millimeters. And it's just to get a good understanding of how much we pour and how much we need to pour to get it level from that end to that end. Mm -hmm. Even though it's leading in this direction. So, but we still need to have three millimeters there according to the to the bone, to the instructions. It needs to be at least three millimeters to be self load bearing. So we need to go up three millimeters there, which means that we're gonna end up with six millimeters if you do a perfect job on this side. Okay. But let's see. Let's see. Room. But right now I'm in the main living area. 
because this is the brightest room we have in the house. Now behind me is the wall where we'll have our office, more or less, just to get you situated. And as you can see, I've prepared three areas to test some colors. Now, the color that I'm most interested in testing today is our white, our gray white. Because this white will be used throughout the house, in different rooms, and then we just really want to make sure that we're happy with how it turns out with our tiles and also with the other colors that we have for the main living area, which is blue and green. So, so yeah, so for the next minutes, what you'll see is just more or less the entire color palette that we will be using in our house. what Dan thinks. If I had to guess, we might go a little bit darker with that blue. But then again, it's not 100% dry. So Now, another thing that I'm really curious to see is how our tiles are going to be matching with those colors. Well, the bathroom tiles, the green one right here, we're only going to use them on one feature wall where we'll have the shower. So I'm not too bothered if there's a bit of a clash between the, the, the colors, the main living room colors. But uh, these tiles, the white ones, we will also be using them in the bathroom, in the shower area, but in the kitchen as well. So I'm super concerned, or what I need to worry most about is just to make sure that these tiles are matching well with those colors. So I think this is a really nice combo. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, so this is going to be pretty much our color palette for the bathroom, like this, which to me looks grand. This is going to be our kitchen. And this is going to be more our living room. So yeah, let's see what Dan thinks about that.
Oh yeah, it feels totally dry, huh? Yeah, it's getting around Yeah, for sure. I mean, this has been drying for, what, maybe 15 hours or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it feels really good. Awesome. Now, on to Tenton Tessie. Oh my god. Good or fun? What do you think? It's a good shower tree, is it? Okay, guys, so this is our shower tray, which weighs 50 kilos, and um, we like to call it Tent on Tessie. So now you just have to put it in place. Yeah, it's more than 50 kilos for sure. Feels like 200. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, oh, you are Turns out the glue isn't quite dry yet, right? Then, no, the weather has really plummeted <laughs> these couple of days and it's uh, wet and rainy, and I think that's what's giving the extra time for the dry to, to... for the dry time. Yeah, exactly. yeah the weather didn't improve the dry no, time at, exactly. all. At, all, at all. So, this means that today we can start painting at least one coat. Uh, this means that the shower tree will have a bit more time to dry yeah. and uh, and yeah, we can still progress along and move along in the project, right? Yeah. Because you can't work there too no, much no. because, yeah, the... It, we want it to dry in place first before we really work on it or step on it. Yeah, our shower tree needs to be fully dry and the glue around it fully cured in order for us to walk there. Yeah. So that means that you can't tile. No. But we can paint, and speaking of paint, we were just given a really, really good trick by our paint guy, and we think it's a trick that you might want to know if you don't know it already. So we asked Tony, shall we use 
the paint gun or shall we roll the bathroom? Right away for him, the answer was just roll it. For a bathroom, it's apparently preferable to, to roll your walls because you get a better finish. Better surface, apparently. Yeah. And the other thing that he was telling me is, of course, when you're using a paint gun, you have to dilute it, you paint a little bit. And in a bathroom, it's not recommended to dilute your paint more than 15%. More or less, that's what I got from the conversation. But do your own research. Um, so and Oregon only allows for paint that are diluted by 30% did notice. So yeah. um, 25, 30% you need to put in there for the gun to work good with paints. So. so yeah, so we didn't want to compromise the integrity of our paint. This is why we opted to roll it. Now, one of the concerns we had about rolling your bathroom is that we didn't really want to have streaks. So for you guys who've painted before, you know that if you're going to be rolling, you always end up with these... Lines somewhere. Yeah. That dries a bit. Off. Yeah. And then that means that your walls aren't too smooth. But then Tony came up with this. I'll get closer to the camera, right? Let's do it for them, right? <laughs> So he basically said, Cindy, if you don't want to have these lines when you buy your, your roller, just make sure that you pull out all the hair just along like this. And just so that they kind of, I don't know if the camera will catch it, but they all stick out. And here we go. Pull, pull, pull. And then he said to cut these here at like a 45 degree angle. So let's see what happens. You want your two seconds of fame, do you? Well, looks good. We will let you know, or you will see it for yourself. Yeah? Yeah. Let's get painting. Let's do this. Do you want me to paint? Yeah. I'm going to put on some music, yeah? Sounds good. Just painting without music. That's uh, not a doable job. Bad. We are now on the fifth day of our bathroom. Now, you might happen. What happened yesterday? Just a few seconds ago, you saw day three. On day four, pretty much all we did is apply a second coat of gray paint on all the walls and the ceiling, yeah. right? The paint is all cure. It's been 24 hours. Mm -hmm. This means that today we can start 
tiny yeah. yet. But we had a bit of a dilemma, we have to say, right? Yeah, a bit. Huh? Yeah. So we have received Starlink yesterday, and then we had really, really, really high hopes that it would just be plug and play, and like suddenly we'd have internet. But it didn't work like that, did it? Not really. No. <laughs> We tried about 10 spots on our land, and we are not managing to get a stable internet connection. Which means that in order for us to continue testing Starlink, there needs to be some massive pole mounted and antennas and trying out even more location. So we have the choice to either tile or look for the best spot for Starlink. Mm -hmm. And we decided to tile today. Because the showers are getting cold. Yeah, it's getting frisky outside. Oh, my goodness gracious. We are both longing for a really nice and hot shower. And because the weather is changing, then the priority needs to be tiling the shower, right? Yeah. Summer is fine, but now it's starting, it's starting to be very frisky when we have to shower at 9 o'clock in the evening. It's, uh, it's a bit cold. It's a bit cold. So because of that, we're going to be tiling the bathroom and it means that we need to put internet on the back burner again. Yeah. But it's okay. Internet, warm shower, mm, warm shower wins. I think so. Right yeah. now. You just have to contact the, the support of Starlink and see what they can come up with. If not, we just have to, I don't know, continue searching. Yeah, continue searching. The other thing that we should tell you as well is that we have seven boxes of gray, uh, green tiles. Now, initially, we were supposed to just do the feature wall, but you guys know we change our mind all the time. And now we're actually considering doing this wall as well with green tiles. We think it's going to help blending in our shower tray, which is black. Mm -hmm. So, But we don't know yet if we will have enough tiles to do this. So that's another reason why it's important to start tiling now, so that if we run out of tiles, then we can either make a decision to go for white, which we had originally planned, or we can decide to order more tiles. Now, because our tiles are Portuguese made, we are very lucky in terms of delivery time. We're looking at about a week and a half, so it's not too bad. No. And so, they're quite uh, cheap as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, these tiles right here, uh, they are actually our compromise tile, mm -hmm. right? Initially, we had planned to go with uh, teal and brown tiles, and then on either side, we were going to have some copper tiles, but uh, turns out that the budget got smaller and mm -hmm. smaller, and one of the two tiles that we initially planned to put in the bathroom were 45 euros a tile. And we needed around 12 of them, so that wasn't possible anymore. So we opted for this model in green and in white, which are eight, no, 18 99 a tile. Yes, 18 99, not a tile, a box. <laughs> 18 99 a box. Yeah. And they're also lighter than the other ones. Yeah. Very yes. much lighter. So we welcome the some relief on this corner because it's already a bit heavy with the shower tray and the. And the uh, leveling cement and the tile is going to be on the on the walls. So if we can lighten up the walls a bit, it's, it's all good, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. So without further ado, let's get tiling. <laughs>
Okay, we are now at the halfway point. So we've got half of this done, and the other half needs to be done of the feature wall. So far, it's going... Going so great, I think. Yeah? Our tile cutter is a bit... Uh, it is what it is, but... Let's try if it's... Uh, <laughs> It's looking so good.
Dili na na dun! Dan, we have about 1% battery left. <laughs> the phone is still going, but barely. Okay. We're done tiling for today. This will need to dry, and of course, after that, we'll grout, install the shower and the glass. But this, you'll be able to see all next week. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good week. Take it see easy. See you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Cutter. There's really much to say about this. Now, this one except styles that are 34 centimeters long. And it's really something that you guys should keep in mind whenever you're tiling your bathroom. It's really easy to say, okay, I'm just going to take a tile cutter. But we have made that mistake before, right, Dan? Yeah, and the price difference are huge. From these, these pants are like the domestic that people buy for their home. There's not, nothing professional about it because they last for three or four jobs and then you kind of need to change them yeah but they're dirt cheap but the one that goes up that takes 45 centimeter tiles and up to 60 they are in the hundreds yes and i think i i don't want to say anything but i would think that this tool we bought is for around 25 30 years yeah, or something, something like that. that yeah 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 so whenever you're picking your tiles for your bathroom if you're going to be doing the job yourself Look for the dimension and also look for the other tools that you will need to purchase in order to make your dream bathroom um, come true. Tile cutters are super expensive if you go for big tiles. Of course, you can always use a grinder to cut them, but from our experience, the tile cutter works so, yeah. so much better. The grinder is nasty work. It just goes everywhere and those splinters find itself. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're not a professional tiler, think about using smaller tiles for your bathroom because you'll save so much money on the tile cutter. And not yeah. all tiles you can cut with a tile cutter either. Some tiles needs to be cut with a wet cutter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, mostly for the floor tiles when it's starting to get thicker and harder. Mm.